Tropical disturbance near the Philippines on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 15th. No active tropical cyclones, although the JTWC did call Tropical Depression 3W in the South China Sea. No one really knows why. It doesn't look like a tropical cyclone and never did at any point, and it is now moving inland over Vietnam. Elsewhere around the world, there's a few other areas of interest active that we're monitoring, but none of them thankfully in the Atlantic. It's day 45 of Atlantic hurricane season, and there are no areas of interest to speak of, just a few areas of cloud across the North Atlantic and some storms over the US. You may have noticed there a 10% chance that we've uh, designated off the coast of uh, Mexico and the Gulf of Tehuantepec, and also that 30% chance that we've got there further out at sea i believe the national hurricane center has gone medium chance on that one now could develop into a brief or maybe not so brief tropical cyclone in the western pacific chances are going now for that western system 50 percent chance for the philippines here from invest 91w now a new designation for it and a 20 percent chance further out at sea for another system that could develop North Indian Ocean, a few clouds here as well with some significant rainfall, mainly over India. But in general, it's a pretty quiet scene as far as tropical cyclones are concerned in the Indian Ocean. But a lot of rain in the area. And in the southwest Indian Ocean, things are also looking very quiet here as well. Uh, just a little uh, possibly frontal system there further to the east, uh, but nothing of any particular note. So let's take a look at Invest 91W, which is crawling closer to Mindanao in the Philippines. It's just 156 kilometers now from Bislig, 307 from Surigao City, 459 from Tacloban, 485 from Cebu City, and 1032 from the capital, of course, Manila. This system is expected to push northwestwards, and there's two schools of thought over what will actually happen here, whether there'll be another um, clamber from these systems to try and develop uh, two different systems out of this, another area of interest in the South China Sea, or whether it's all part of the same thing. It's a really very confusing. We'll try and pick it out in a moment. Here's the latest satellite imagery of the region, looking over the South China Sea there, and in the center, you can possibly see the beginnings of maybe another system trying to develop our so-called tropical depression off towards the very left hand side there moving into vietnam now uh, but this second system uh, could be something that will be pushing on northwestwards as well and then really this big mess near the philippines with this other area of interest 91w which uh, some models suggest might still split into two uh, i'm really very confused as to what might happen well this is uh, 3w uh, which were pushing into the coast of Vietnam there obviously and a lot of cloud cover over Laos and now entering Thailand as well uh, some significant rainfall under there uh, but really I think it's quite laughable that they called this a tropical depression uh, no real signs that it ever had the sustained convection that was required for that status whether it even had a circulation is still up for grabs as well yesterday it did look quite decent but I think there were still two competing circulations late last evening um, and so it's very confusing, uh, but nonetheless, that's what they've gone with. There's a quick look at 91W there as well, uh, rotating a little bit better there. And this now is a look at the Eastern Pacific. We are getting a little bit of a train of systems there, the Intertropical Convergence Zone, but uh, whether they'll become tropical cyclones or indeed the one that we're looking at in particular in the middle there uh, remains to be seen quick look at the uh, east co coast of africa west coast of africa there the eastern atlantic uh, some of the imagery is down as well again i'm afraid and this again is another look at the western pacific on the water vapor view and certainly a lot of moisture there in the south china sea from what looks like a new system starting to appear so it's a big um you know uh fight there for all of these systems to try and develop superiority and become a dominant system and actually develop into a tropical cyclone none of them have managed to do it yet and this is a quick look at the north indian ocean as well a lot of monsoonal showers pushing all across india uh, and further south as well 
Well, sea surface temperatures haven't changed very much. They're still looking pretty good, around 30 degrees Celsius off the coast of Mexico. Look further west where that invest is. It's probably around, well, not an invest yet, but area of interest around 26 to 27 degrees. It will cool as the system heads north. And this is the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. Look at those really high temperatures there above 30 degrees Celsius towards 32. Gulf Stream looking good as well off the US East Coast, looking very warm indeed. Western Pacific is still on fire right now around the northern part of the Philippines through the southern Ryukyu Islands of Japan and around Taiwan. Temperatures looking very good indeed, up to 32 degrees Celsius over a large area. Uh, massive vintage for these systems and in the North Indian Ocean, a few areas there pushing close to 30 degrees again north of Sri Lanka, near West Bengal and in parts of the Eastern Arabian Sea. Well, compared to, to average, the Atlantic is still very warm indeed, with a slight cool spot there in the Sargasso Sea, but elsewhere it's looking very warm compared to normals, up to 3 or 4 degrees above average in the areas that matter. Eastern Pacific also getting better as well there, with temperatures creeping up compared to the normals. And in the Western Pacific too, it's those higher latitudes, 20, 30, 40 degrees north, that are 3 or 4 degrees above average, and even in the deep tropics it's around 1 to 2 degrees above. The oceanic heat content is off the charts in large parts of the western pacific there really crying out for significant tropical cyclone development of course we don't really want that and in the eastern pacific there uh, still not looking that great uh, but a few little areas of green starting to appear again and this is the atlantic still showing off that very large area a big corridor there for storms in the caribbean sea past jamaica cayman islands through the western tip of Cuba into the Gulf of Mexico. Extremely high values there, and lots, of, lots of energy for tropical cyclones. Thankfully though, none of the computer models this time are showing anything for the Atlantic. So we're looking at this East Pack system developing eventually into a tropical storm on the GFS forecast there. Uh, other models aren't, still aren't quite so keen on it, but the support is generally on the up. Uh, so we could finally see our second tropical cyclone of the Eastern Pacific. And by the way, with just 0.2 units of ACE so far, it is now the worst start to the Eastern Pacific since at least 1948. Wow. In the Western Pacific, we're looking for this next possible system as well. Uh, a large rotation moving through the South China Sea from that system we've just been watching into the Gulf of Tonkin. And then another system really starts to develop, possibly from 91W. We're not quite sure. 91W, watch again here, moving through the Philippines into the Visayas region. Is it the same as that new system that forms in the South China Sea? Not sure. It could be a little transfer of energy. Could be a brand new system. Then another one further out to sea as well. That's the other one, the 20% that we've been watching there as well very messy hectic scenario in the western pacific looking at rainfall expectations over that time period as well uh, some areas are going to get quite a lot over the next seven days and this is what they're showing uh, certainly if that big storm develops in the south china sea look at it pummeling the coast of china there uh, in the philippines some areas could get up to 400 millimeters of rainfall along the western shorelines and through the visayas region getting up and above 250 millimeters some points out to sea there over the South China Sea getting up to 800 millimetres and towards that Chinese landfall could be getting towards 500. High amounts in northern Vietnam as well should be mentioned. In the medium range, day 5 to 10, Eastern Pacific, possible development of that next system south of Mexico and then pushing off towards the northwest, almost hugging the coast for a bit. Uh, a weak tropical storm, really. Um, and maybe a little thing going on in the Atlantic there as well. Some rotation that moves through uh, Florida, I think. Uh, there it is. Uh, it doesn't look like a tropical cyclone, but you can never be too sure. We'll keep watching that one just in case as well. In the Western Pacific, during the same time period, we see this typhoon rocketing up towards the coast of China. Strong Category 2 landfall by the looks of things there. And then this next system, which becomes a very powerful typhoon, swirling around another center there. And then sweeping up into the coast of Japan. Landfall on Shikoku there as a Category 1 or 2. Uh, but that is near the end of that 10-day period. So a lot can change in this time, especially when we're monitoring several low-pressure systems, which could all do different things. Really difficult to predict. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request at any time. And our still waiting for a Hone t-shirt as well is still available. 
No sign of it though, not even in the Silly Range. And this is what we're looking at now. That typhoon moves through Japan, still possibly tropical, near Korea there. And then another system tries to form enormous system through Taiwan. And then another one there, uh, off the... Uh, monsoon becoming a very powerful not powerful but very large system towards the very end of that run there again heading towards the japanese islands will any of these actually happen that's the big question mark i should think that we'll at least get some of these forming it is july we get all this nonsense every year pretty much in july and august in the western pacific well, a storm that meant no nonsense back in 1989, though, it was Typhoon Gordon which reached a spectacular Category 5 peak before making landfall in Luzon in the Philippines, one of the strongest storms of the decade. And we also had a few other systems active, Hurricane Delilia in the Eastern Pacific, Tropical Depression 7E forming just behind it, and Tropical Depression 9W behind Gordon. Also, another little surprise there in the South Indian Ocean, 2S, which was only 40 miles per hour officially but on satellite it looked quite a bit better it has to be said so i'll leave our analysts to uh, wonder how strong that one actually was well back to today and the next name on the atlantic naming list of course is debbie in the eastern pacific it's still bud and in the central pacific it is of course still hone 24 storms so far this year a very low number really now that we're getting further into the year and in the Western Pacific, the next name is Gamey. In the North Indian Ocean, it is Asna. We are code blue, of course, for Invest 91W for its potential effects in the Philippine Islands, mainly due to the rainfall threat, but also due to how soon this potential landfall could occur. In the Australian region, next name is Robin. Southwest Indian Ocean, Ansha. And in the South Pacific, it's Pitta. And that's it from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow. I'm an ultimate fan today.